This lesson will apply some real-life concepts to designing our layout for our kitchen. Okay, so before we jump into our kitchen, let's do something that is going to be really helpful and we'll really see the benefit of this later on in our course. I want to name this circuit system that we just set up. So later on, we can create a nice schedule that's going to let me know what breaker controls what circuit, which is going to be helpful for people actually laying out the system but also for the people who are going to be occupying this space uh, and for property management things or, you know, things of that nature, any kind of emergencies, they know which breakers to trip, which breakers to turn on, things like that. So let's do this really quick. So really all we need to do is hover over any of those elements that we just set inside of our circuit. And I'm going to hit the tab key twice. One, two. And what I can do is I can select and we could do one of two things. I can come here in my properties and I can maybe assign a name under the comments. I'm going to hit escape here and I'm going to hover back over our system again, our lighting circuit. And or I can hit tab once, click, and now I can add a note here underneath my electrical engineering section. It'll be a schedule circuit notes. And then what I'll do is I'll apply a name to this one. So this will be utility room lights. If I wanted to, I can get even more complicated with the circuit. Maybe one set of lights is on one circuit, and maybe this light on the other side is set on a, on a circuit itself. But for our design, we're going to keep it pretty simple, and all these lights in this utility room will be on one circuit. So now that I have that in place, let's do the same thing for our receptacle. So again, I'm just going to tab once over our receptacle circuit. I'll click, and I'll type in utility room outlets and as I'm building out my circuits throughout my space I'm gonna make sure I definitely do this uh, it's gonna make going back and creating my schedule so much easier and not having to go back and rename and things can get confusing the more busy uh, your drawing gets with all the wires and fixtures and lights uh, that might be in place so doing it as you go is definitely best practice in my opinion so I'll click apply here and now we can start designing what we want to happen here in our kitchen or break area. Now, when we set up our first utility room here, we basically just pulled elements and placed them in here. But let's take a more designed or scientific approach to getting this accomplished. That way we know that all our loading is all right on that circuit and we're also code compliant. So in a kitchen area, I'm gonna need a couple of outlets. Um, one on this wall um, for, you know, in case anyone's eating here, maybe we have some lighting, but I'm gonna need some countertop outlets um, that are GFCI protected, but I'm also going to need something maybe to plug into my range. So let's get started by doing a quick calculation that's going to let me know that the loading on this circuit is going to be okay. So when I click on any one of these here, you see two numbers, and these two numbers are going to be very important to us when we're doing our calculation. The first is this 180, and then the second is this 120 volts. So what we need to do is we need to we know that we have a 20 amp system here or circuit and we want to know exactly how many outlets we can have without overloading this system so since I know that it's 20 20 amps and I know that these are 120 volts a little bit of simple math will tell me exactly where I need to go so I'm gonna pull up my calculator real quick and what we need to do is we know that 120 volts is that outlet and we're going to multiply that times the 20 amp on that circuit or that breaker. And that's going to give us 2,400. And you remember that 180 I showed you, the volts amps? Now we simply divide this number by that 180. And what that is, it lets me know that that particular strip can handle 180 in you know, any of our receptacles, often known as strips. So we'll type in 180, divide that, and that lets me know that I can place at the most 13 fixtures or uh, electrical outlets throughout this without overloading that particular circuit. Now that's overkill for what we're doing in this kitchen. So we're definitely not going to be getting close to 13, probably going to maybe do two per wall at the most. So we'll probably be about six, um, but we definitely know where to go and what not to exceed. So I'm going to close this out really quick and we could start placing our outlets here. So when I place my outlet, I'm going to want the first one here to be GFCI protected. And all the ones following that 
on that circuit will also be protected. So I really only need to have one GFCI protected. If I wanted to, I can have each individual one, but that's a little bit overkill. Having one in place is just enough. So once that trips, everything else in that circuit will trip as well. So it's a real simple, basic approach to getting it done. So again, we're going to go to our device. We'll go to electrical fixture, and we're going to make sure we select our GFCI receptacle this time. And I'm going to place this one right here. This will be our first one. And it'll also be our home run. This will be the one that's closest to the panel here. And now, any of the ones that I place after this, I can just place a standard receptacle. So we'll go back to device, electrical fixture. We'll go to the drop down and get some standards. So this first one, um, or this next one we can actually place, we're going to make sure it's going to be at the right elevation. Uh, one, because it's going to need to plug in our stove or oven or things of that nature into this one. So I can place that one here, and I'm going to play against it to this elevation. So one foot six sounds about right. But if you wanted a, another countertop, I can simply go back to device again, electrical fixture, make sure I grab a standard. But this time I can either change its offset or I can go load one up that's you know specifically for countertops. But really the only difference is the, the elevation. So while I'm here, I'm just going to change that elevation to maybe four feet. I'll click apply and now we have another one here for maybe some extra appliances that we want to plug in in our break area and we'll bring in one more we'll do device electrical fixture and I'm gonna change this elevation back to one foot six inches and we'll place this one on this side for our eating area in case we had anything we want to plug into that wall so we are so far in good shape so in the next lesson, we'll continue finishing out this space and finishing out the circuit for our kitchen and break area.